Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at installing the Rust programming language and writing a basic Hello World program in Rust. If this video is popular at all, my idea is to make a series of videos that are basically going to be a tutorial going through Rust. Except the thing is, I myself don't know Rust. I know very little about Rust at the moment. So the idea is we're kind of going to explore it together. So I found installing Rust pretty easy. I just basically searched for Rust and it landed on me on this rust-lang.org page. If you go to the getting started page, here we've got instructions for installing Rust on a Mac, which is what I'm using. And if you want to install it on Windows, there are also details for that on this website. I tried installing Rust on Windows as well, and all I had to do was run the installer, nothing more than that, so it was really easy. So right now on a Mac, I'm going to go to a terminal and paste in this stuff. So here's a terminal. Let's paste it in and see what happens. I've got to answer yes here and just hit return. Okay, so that's finished. Now, the thing is on a Mac, unlike on Windows, once you install it, that doesn't seem to automatically add any of the Rust tools to your path. So if I type Rust C here, I find I have to eat my words. Okay, so on my other Mac, which is an old laptop, what I found was that I had to run a little script to add the Rust directory that had been created in a folder called .cargo in my home directory to the path environment variable. And I should say that in this course, if it ends up being a course, I'm going to assume you already know how to program. So I'm not going to be spending time on absolute basics. And hopefully if you are using a Mac, you can figure out how to add directories to your path environment variable. So here it doesn't seem like I have to do this. I don't know why. I think this Mac is even older than my other one, possibly, but it seems to work right out the box. So now I need something to write Rust programs in, and I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, which is my favorite editor at the moment. It's this free programmers editor from Microsoft, and it's really good, perhaps surprisingly. So one thing that's probably worth doing is if you use Visual Studio Code, click this extensions icon on the left hand side here. Search for Rust and install whatever the first extension is that comes up. So I actually installed this and I'm going to do it here on this computer as well. And that seems to be fine. So let's close this page. Now I'm going to open a folder that I've created to put my Rust projects in. So I'm going to say that I trust the authors of everything in this folder since I am the author of it. And in there, I think I'll create a subfolder. Let's write 001 hello world. And in that folder, I'll create a file. So Rust programs apparently have the extension .rs. So I'm going to create a file called main.rs. But I should think hello.rs or whatever would work just as well. Let's get rid of this welcome screen. And now I need to type a Rust program. So if you're coming to this from a wide variety of programming languages in which there is a main function, you might suspect we need a main function here, and that seems to be the case. It's not like Python, as far as I know at this point, where you can just type a command by itself. We do need a main function. So we use fn apparently for defining functions. I'm going to call this one main, and we're going to put curly brackets there. Then I'm going to type print ln. So print ln is pretty standard across a variety of languages. That's print line, of course. But something that caught me out at first was that you've got to follow this with an exclamation mark. So let's just go with that. Then we've got round brackets, as is pretty typical. And in double quotes, I'm going to write hello world. And it seems we've got to finish this line with a semicolon. Now let's try and compile this. Do Rust programs compile? I think they do. So in Visual Studio Code here, I'm going to use the terminal that's built in there. Let's go to the terminal menu and new terminal. So I seem to be in the right directory and I'm going to type Rust C main.rs. Okay, that didn't work because I forgot I've got to go into this hello world subdirectory. Let's try that again. And well, it finishes silently, which I think is a good sign. Let's take a look. And we've got this executable program called main. So I'm going to run it with dot slash main. And it says hello world. So I've written 
well, this is actually my second Rust program. Now, I don't know if this topic is something people who follow my channel are interested in or not. So I'm going to make this one video and see how it goes. And if it gets some likes or views, then I'll probably continue. Because I am interested in Rust. I would actually like to learn it. One thing that intrigues me is that it's kind of touted or seems to be as a possible replacement for C++ because apparently it manages memory in a way that avoids many of the pitfalls of C++. So that sounds very appealing. And I'm curious to find out exactly how Russ achieves that. Now I've decided to create a substack where you can find all the information that was in this video. And I'm also going to put my videos on there so you'll be able to watch them without any adverts. That's completely free, at least at the moment. So if you're interested in that, please go to caveofprogramming.substack.com and there you're going to be able to find all the stuff that I'm potentially going to make on Rust. This isn't finished yet, but by the time you see this video, I'm going to embed a video in this. And I'm also going to do something about this source code, which is not well formatted on Substack. 